Welcome back. In the last clip we finished setting up all the shaders and now we will set up the render layers and do some last performance tweaks here. Because perhaps you notice that if you start the rendering the generating displacement takes a really long time and also we have this issue here. So what can we do about it? Let's take a look here in the scene view. So here we have our surface preview and here's already the issue. Because of this camera first room it cuts away the plane down here. So one way would be to increase the window size here. But another problem is that it takes a really long time for creating the displacement. Because this mesh here is pretty high res. If we display our flat wire shaded you can see that because of the extrude divisions we need so it can be cut off properly here we have a pretty high res mesh and for displacement the best choice is a low res mesh. I mean it is a pretty nice feature here the camera frustum option but in our case it's not working as expected. I mean we save all geometry behind the camera but Mantra is also pretty clever when rendering so I think we can disable here our camera frustum option. Now we get back the whole grid but now we can also lower the extrude divisions because it's fine if there is one really big face. So let's put down the extrude divisions to 4. And now you can see that we still have our big grid but the count, the poly count here is much lower. Let's see, it's one primitive because at the moment it's set to compress fluid surface. So let's change it just for preview here to surface polygons to see the real poly count change. But even better, let's take a look at our final mesh here to get the correct number. OK. Let's make sure that here we are also not using the camera option anymore, so disable it. OK, so now here the extrude divisions are also reduced. What's left are about 200,000 points. I also checked it before and there we had nearly 400,000. So with disabling here the camera option and also reducing the extrude divisions, it was possible to cut the poly count to half. So now the displacement should generate much faster. Also, let's jump up here again and inside our guided ocean layer fluid interior and here let's reduce the depth of our extrusion to 0.2 because that's way enough for our refraction purpose. Back up again we are ready with the performance tweaks. So let's jump back here to our render cam and now let's set up the render layers properly. So basically we have our ocean. Let's check this allow motion blur toggle because we want to render with motion blur and set the geotine samples here to 2. OK. So let's set it here to 1.5 min max ray samples. If you need higher quality you can increase this value here or also the pixel samples but for now it's fine. The limits are also fine. Depending on your resolution you need you can either render in full res or override the camera resolution to half res. To get our result a bit faster we will stay with half res here now and now let's take a look at our objects tab here. So we have the guided lotion layer fluid extended here and the interior. Let's bring the interior here to our phantom objects because we just need to see them in the refractions and for this the phantom option is totally fine. What else we need for our ocean? We need the boat because the idea is to split up the rendering in several layers so in a compositing process we have all the options to tweak them separately. That means that we're going to split up our rendering in the ocean layer, the boat layer, the white water layer and the mist layer. So four layers in total. Let's see, as a matte object we need for sure our boat and as a phantom object we're also going to pick here our white water import and our mist import. So on our ocean surface we have a proper shadowing and reflection of our white water. That's really important. Okay, basically that's it for the first layer. Let's take a look at the white water. Here we added several things we don't need anymore. So let's see. Let's bring this here, these objects, all to the mat tab. So also the boat should be a mat. Also the boat. Make sure you just put boat here. And let's bring the mist here down to our phantom objects. OK, that's it for our white water. So next is the boat. Let's just copy this ocean mantra here. Let's call it boat. OK, 
Now the boat is our force object and this one here is our mat object. Okay, that's fine. We don't need the white water here as a mat because we will layer it on top of our boat and the white water already has a boat as a mat. So always think on the order you're going to composite it later on together when setting up these layers. So last but not least we need our mist. Okay, again here let's put the mist as a force object and let's put a white water import here as a mat. Okay, very nice. So now we have our four layers. Just make sure that on all of them here the low motion blur option is ticked on. And let's increase it to five. Also on the white water tab. Let's see, allow motion blur, two and five. One last thing we need to do here is to add some extra image planes on our ocean tab here. Let's see extra image planes. What we need is the shading depth, which is a Z path. Also let's add here the combined lighting per component so that we can play a bit in compositing with the reflection, the refraction and the hues intensities. So very nice. Let's see here. Let's also do the same thing for our boat. Extra image planes, depths and the combined lighting. For the mist, let's take a look. And the same thing here for our mist and last but not least for our white water. So yeah, that was also our last Houdini clip here. In the next one, we will put everything together in Nuke, add a nice background, so in the end you have a polished shot. But even if you're not interested in the compositing part, I would recommend taking a look at the last clip, because there's always the next iteration, so we will review the rendering and see which areas could be improved even more. See you in the next clip.